Hey everyone and welcome to day two, part 11 of the Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi series and we have just had an amazing ride. We're up here on a mountain uh, from Prowl is where we stayed last night if you saw the last vlog and now we are headed to Khe San and that's the next stop and uh, the roads are really good, they're quiet, they're empty. I mean, if you check this out, it's just incredible. You know, we've got views for days. It's, look at that tree there. There's, oh, that's just a pole. <laughs> uh, but there are these huge trees with vines and all sorts of really cool uh, things to see along the way. Basically, we've got jungle type scenery right now. And before that, it was more foresty. So the, the jungle scenery is really spectacular because the, you have these big trees with all the vines on them. It's really beautiful. We're doing a few hundred Ks today. I think it's actually gonna be fairly easy. We woke up and got started earlier today. I've got a better bag set up than I did yesterday. My setup wasn't that great. Um, I had a lot of issues, especially with what I was wearing. So now I'm wearing lighter pants. I had these special jeans with all the protective casings in them on the knees and on the hips, but the jeans were just so tight and hot. So now I'm a lot cooler, feeling good, and this road is incredible. Look at that. The stick bug playing dead looking like a stick. So how's the ride going? It's so smooth. These roads are really well kept. And there's nobody out here, and the thing I love the most is just the peace and quiet. There's nothing around. But earlier, I had a hornet, or some kind of wasp, in my helmet. I just flipped this up and it came out the top. I don't know how they got in there. It's been peaceful otherwise. Except for bugs. Yeah, the closed face helmet already is way better. I didn't realize how much wind noise you get with a half head helmet as opposed to a big one. Yeah. Full head but definitely more kitted out for this trip, which is really good. Uh, especially with the jacket, I'm happy with that, and the full head helmet, and the uh, faster bikes. Those make a big difference on the uphills, right? Because uh, if you've just got a small 100cc or 110cc, you might be struggling on the uphills. These 150 Yamaha winners are doing a really good job. You don't need anything more powerful than this for this trip. I mean, you don't really want to be going more than 80 kilometers an hour anyway so yeah works pretty well hey now honey i've been driving around in my car looking for some kind of open bar it's gonna be all right gonna be all right got no money but i'll work it out with my charm having a good time and doing no harm it's gonna be all right gonna be all right hey now honey i've been driving around in my car looking for some kind of open bar it's gonna be all right gonna be all right got no 
money, but I work it out with my charm. Having a good time and doing no harm. It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright. Kyle's running back for his bike. We just found this cool tunnel over here. And we're right in the mountains now. We're getting close to Laos. We're really high up. I'd be interested to check what the altitude is here. But it's gotta be whew, super high. And the views are spectacular. And we just found this cool tunnel, which is really long too. I don't know, this road is so windy, so long. It must have been how hundreds of thousands of man hours put into this project here. Got some traveling seeds too. Hello little puppy. Hello face. Oh you got some dirt on your nose. Look at her face. Oh pure happiness. She was just Oh don't bite. No. Hello. Come here. Come on. Not you. And we just at this little homestay that we found along the way. Where it looks like a nice place to stay if you're uh, wanting to find a little place when you're this far along. Maybe if you did more on your first day of the trip. Come here. Uh, but we are. I'm gonna go a little bit further because it's only midday. We can probably wash our hands too. Hello. <laughs> Everyone wants <laughs> attention. <laughs> so far there have been enough gas stations. I think the next stretch, not what we're gonna do tomorrow, but the day after, we might have to carry some gas bottles. But uh, another important thing is hydration. I've got just a bottle here that's got a carabiner on, so you can actually hook it on as well as put it in that little plate there. And Kyle's got one of these cool hydration packs. When traveling cross country Vietnam, I only trust the hydration system from Tijet motorbikes. Yeah, so that works pretty well. Kyle got that at Tijet also where we rented the bikes. Yep, it is good. It's working just fine. I haven't actually made use of like drinking while I drive yet, but I can fit it under my full face helmet. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to do it while you drive, but yeah. like when you stop, you don't have to take your helmet off. We made it to Alui and I'm here in a room that we got at a small guest house. It's very basic. Flat hard beds are what Vietnamese people like sleep on on a day-to-day -day basis very often. And I just thought I would 
give everyone watching this a little bit of a reality check for those that are just enjoying this vlog with all the cinematic shots and the drone footage um, you know and, and making it look so exciting and cool we just went and got dinner for 10,000 dong for a meal and that was half a dollar right so that's how much we paid for a meal and I'm riding a motorbike with an expensive helmet that's a hundred dollars you know and flying a aircraft with a camera on it for fun and I'm driving across the country for fun it's and I'm already feeling like the effects of this this trip I'm I get into a little bit of a low after the high of the riding as you can probably tell right now but I thought I'd share that because that's the reality of how you'll feel when you're traveling and not only that when you're exposed to the realities of what people live like in rural countries in the countryside in developing countries too uh, you'll you'll get a bit of a or at least I'd hope you would check your privilege a little bit you know I just wanted to add this because otherwise I don't want these vlogs to feel unauthentic and just trying to show the glitz and the glam you know even though I'm not a amazing filmographer I still like to make it look cool and and show you how fun and exciting it can be that's definitely what a trip like this can be like and it is in a lot of ways but um, maybe I'll talk about this a bit more in future vlogs but there's also um, a lot of realities of driving on the roads here there's dangers there's um, a lot of stuff that you know I don't want people to watch these and just be like oh I can just hop on a bike and ride across Vietnam you know, there's things to consider like licenses and uh, all sorts of laws and, and just general safety tips and um, yeah so I guess this is just you know showing a little bit of the other side of what the first half of this vlog might have been like so <laughs> hate to leave it on a downer but I just wanted to be real and yeah hope you enjoyed this one because that was one of the most awesome rides of my life and it just seems to be getting better and better so we'll see how the rest of the trip goes i'll speak to you soon peace out hey now honey i've been driving around in my car looking for some kind of open bar it's gonna be all right gonna be all right got no money but i'll work it out with my charm having a good time and doing no harm it's gonna be all right gonna be all right hey now honey i've been driving around in my car